as far as the election upcoming is concerned, uh, uh, you know, we'll have a longer show on that, I'm sure. Uh, but uh, basically, you know, U.S. elections that now deter national elections come down to seven states. That's it. Oh, God. The, gerrymandering, <laughs> the gerrymandering and uh, uh, the control of the narratives and messages uh, and everything, uh, you know, is, is really, you know, as it has been from 2016, not much has changed from 2016, by the way. We saw the same issues in 2020. And uh, Biden probably won because of COVID at that time uh, and the mail-in ballots and so forth, right? He doesn't have that advantage right now. And if you look at the seven states, he's running behind. And in some of them, way behind, double digit, like Arizona, Nevada, Georgia, he's way behind. And he had to win all those in order to win the presidency. And he's marginally behind in, in Wisconsin and uh uh, Michigan and Pennsylvania, right? Those are the six or seven states that were throwing another one somewhere, uh, maybe Virginia, right? I don't know. Uh, and that's where it's going to be determined, as it was in 2020 and as it was in 2016. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's behind. He's definitely behind. Uh, the efforts to legally uh, put Trump... Uh, you know, behind an eight ball have, have backfired. They haven't worked, right? Uh, we've got the issues of Biden's age, which is obvious, right? Uh, I mean, it's really something when you got octogenarians running the show in the U.S. during this critical period. I mean, the parties don't really let, uh, they're so managed from the center, from their committees, that they really... Uh, uh, are just hanging on to the old the old guard, you know. No new ideas. The old guard means no new ideas, and and that's what we've got, we've got going on. I think a lot. The Democrats are doing everything they can to prevent any third parties playing any role. You know, they're squelching democracy. They're they don't allow uh, uh, any uh, challenging within their own party with the primaries and so forth. Uh, and the Supreme Court says, uh, well, you know. They don't have to be democratic, right? They're clubs. That's what they said. The parties are really clubs. They can run by any rule they want. <laughs> Believe it or not, right? They're clubs. Uh, and, uh, you know, the Democrat club is doing everything to, to uh, uh, keep people off the ballot, third parties off the ballot, whether it's Greens or JFK, Junior, RFK Jr., you know, or uh, who, who, whomever here. Uh, and uh, the Republicans, of course, were uh, trying to uh, outmaneuver the big Republican money was trying to outmaneuver Trump. And well, that that collapsed. You know, Trump is the nominee, no doubt. And uh, a lot depends what happens between now and, and November. It, it, it can be very chaotic. I think this is going to be I mean, we thought 2020 was chaotic. I think this is going to be even more chaotic and uh, 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 even a greater risk to U.S. democracy, you know. I'm not a Trump supporter. I'm not a Biden supporter. I think both of them are disaster, just different forms of disaster to the U.S. here. Uh, but the, neither of those parties will allow any challengers. You know, the Republicans gerrymander the hell out of everything and uh, voters suppress everything and wherever they can. The Democrats go after independence and try to... Uh, uh, you know, legislate ballot access, you know, and court ruled ballot access. It's all part of the decline of democracy going on in this country. Uh, that's very worrisome, you know, and the media is, is just a henchman in the whole mainstream media, in the whole process, you know. It, it's a, it, it's a foreboded, uh, foreboding situation. Uh, I mean, we talked a lot about economy, but the political system, domestically and foreign policy, is in crisis as well, I think in both cases. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm sure we, we could talk some more about the, the election, which I continue writing some things about here as well as it goes. I've been writing on these elections, articles on these elections since 2008 and continue to do so, which is kind of a, a, a reflection of the decline of democ electoral democracy mm -hmm. going on in this country. That, Continue. It's part of the, the, the decline of neoliberalism. As I've argued in my books, neoliberal economic policies and wealth uh, 
making your wealth for the one percent uh, cannot continue uh, with democracy, right? Uh, it has to find and is finding a way uh, to circumscribe democracy and democratic norms in order to continue. Uh, so the political crisis is a reflection of the economic crisis and the global empire's crisis. Something that you said, I actually want to um, continue this a little bit longer if possible because um, you recuperated some points that I've been making, especially the earlier stages of this forum, um, not so much uh, towards the middle and progressing along because um, I don't want to make everything um, about like just, we know that Congress is a mess. I think it has 14% popularity overall. Um, we know that the president really has very, very limited power compared to Congress even not. But we put so much emphasis on the president, which is just a figurehead in my opinion. I mean, technically commander in chief, but honestly, can't well, write bills. The last and, guy who thought he was president was JFK. Was that? JFK. He's the last guy who actually thought he was president and acted like he thought right. he was president. Right? Mm -hmm. Ever since then, I, I think they've been increasingly uh, presidential uh, uh, scope of action. And what a president can do has been increasingly circumscribed uh, mm -hmm. by other forces uh, within and not just government forces, but uh, you know there is this thing called the deep state. There is something, no that, doubt, whatever it is. But going to what you were saying about electoral the gerrymandering, I want to tell you guys something on beautiful people. I'm going to get a guest on to specifically to specifically address uh, and who has published extensively about the electoral college, um, like it's in the form of long form book. And I say that because um, I think that that's a misconception. The Electoral College, as far as I'm concerned, is not an issue. Um, the system is what it is. We know what the system is. Ever since we've been born, we've used the Electoral College. The Electoral College benefits the two-party system. I don't know why people fall into that trap thinking that they really want to change the Electoral College. Do you really believe that they want to change the system that's benefiting them. We have 50 states. As Dr. Rasmus was saying, every election comes on the eight or nine battlegrounds by design because they don't want to campaign all states. Why would they want to campaign and waste their money on all 50 states? So the Electoral College benefits them because they can pinpoint certain states that they need to win the election. There's just a back and forth cycle every time. They already kick people off the ballots, or if they don't kick them off, they make the rules so ridiculous to the point where people who want to run for office aren't incentivized to, even if they file for the Federal Election Commission. For me, a real de democratic process would be if you declare candidacy for president, you file with the Federal Election Commission, you're a viable candidate. But what happens? They don't get any uh, mainstream attention. They get completely suppressed by the media, no visibility whatsoever. They create these arbitrary rules for you to get on stage with certain news networks. All these presidential commissions are ran by the two parties. So we can't even talk about democracy because the system is already designed for the red blue team to be in power each cycle. Even at the local levels is bad. You can't, I can't even think of um, my local PSL chapter my local Green Party chapter, my local Libertarian Party chapter. And these are some of the more elevated, known minor parties. And so we have a lot of issues um, going into this um, future. I would say, I also want to make a comment that this is the biggest opportunity in my lifetime, I think, to see where the country is, the pulse of the country, when it comes to outside of the blue-red team. If we don't get five to ten percent nationally um and i'm speaking to independents and minor party candidates i think we're in some serious trouble um i think this is the greatest opportunity ever we see that the leadership is the weakest it's ever been in both parties i mean you got a president that's basically they're trying to put him in jail a prison they're talking about putting him into prison beating the other guy behind bars because he's so damn incompetent he doesn't know where he is half the time. See now, 
And it's just, that's just being honest. I mean, and, and people will, will say whatever they want to say about me, but we know that Biden is incompetent. It's just the reality. I don't care if you like him or not. He's incompetent. That's all I can say about it. But we just have um, 2024 is going to be quite revealing to your point. And um, I'm, I'm here for it. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. I have a suspicion. I think Trump is probably going to be reelected more than likely. I mean, I don't see any other any indication that anything is going to happen outside of that opinion. But we will see. Things have happened before. And um, things are definitely set up to happen in 2024. But um, just be careful with the Electoral College talk. Because if Trump wins again, it's going to come up again. It's because he won because of the Electoral College, which is bullshit. The Electoral College benefits the two parties. It has nothing to do with that. And, and both parties know this going in that the Electoral College is the system that we're with. So yeah. I just think it's an excuse. Yeah, well... You know, you, you, you said it correctly. Uh, neither party wants to get rid of the Electoral College. They, they both want it, right? <laughs> they want to keep it uh, because it's a last uh, safety valve. It's a check and balance. I mean, you look at all the opposition to uh, billionaire uh, Republican Party uh, candidate Trump. You, know, you can just imagine if it were a real independent or a socialist, what they'd be doing to their democracy and Electoral College, Right. Uh, the, the system was set up with, they say, checks and balances, but really it's a way of uh, maintaining rule uh, should the electorate uh, really turn um, militant, you know, and opposed. There's lots of ways the Supreme Court and so forth and uh, uh, a lot of checks. It's not just the uh, Congress and the House and the Senate, right? The whole system is set up uh, and the Electoral College is, is, is part of that. Look, you got to you you got to think in, a, in new terms. You got to think that the, the, this two party system is not a two party system. It's a single party with two wings, right? And uh, they represent a, a little different weights in terms of the population and their interests, right? But on certain issues, they are in total agreement like on foreign policy of the empire and so forth, the two wings are in total agreement. Oh, look, look what's happening with Israel, right? You think that th there's an opposition here? There's no opposition here, right? They're in total agreement on that, right? Uh, there's splits now, uh, you know, over the Ukraine thing. They're in total agreement about China and going after China, right? There are two wings of the same party uh, that... Uh, uh, in the 21st century are engaging in kind of a political food fight, right? Uh, and uh, developing certain, uh, certain policies that differ over domestic issues that there's some disagreement on, right? And, and that's what we're, we're, we're seeing, you know? I mean, the immigration is a domestic issue, right? Uh, uh, gay rights and whatever, that's a domestic issue. Mm -hmm. uh, religion, that's a domestic issue, right? Crime and so forth. So they'll fight over those issues and they've created their own uh, uh, dueling ideologies to justify it. You know, on, on the Democrat side, you got all the wokeism and identity politics, right? And on the Republican side, you got QAnon and conspiracy theory. <laughs> and all of this is what I call the great distraction. You see, this is how the two sides compete now. So they don't have to compete over real issues of, uh, you know, what's happening to the middle class and working class and what's happening to our jobs, what's happen happening to uh, uh, technology and society, you know, and uh, the culture and things like that. They don't have to talk about that. You know, they can talk about they create and and their controlled media creates these issues and makes you think that's how you got to choose between the two wings and it doesn't matter on the really fundamental things of who gets rich and what wars and the empire because both of the wings are in total agreement on that but they keep us uh, uh they play us right it's a shell game it's a shell game they play us over these issues and there's little token differences between them but on the big issues fundamentally there's no difference and they keep us distracted with all these phony social issues right mm -hmm. that we think uh, you know whether it's uh, i mean they're not totally phony but what they do is they uh, uh, elevate these issues to the primary issue 
uh, a choice of who you want to choose, right? And they got us into this this game, this electoral game, and we're choosing on things that uh, are not fundamental. We're choosing these politicians on things that aren't fundamental to our real condition, which continues to deteriorate in this country, deteriorate. Right? Uh, and, that, and that's the way you need to look at it. Right? And both sides want to keep third parties out of this thing. Right? Both sides don't want it. Uh, you know, I, I mean, the Republicans are worried that Trump will be a third party, right? And, uh, you know, the Democrats are worried, well, RFK might, you know, upset the apple cart here and whatever. Uh, and then you even got guys like uh, uh, who run as if they are, are, are independent, but they're really part of the Democratic Party, like Bernie Sanders. You know? Oh, God. Yeah. And, uh, that, that was a big, big phony play there, you know, to keep people tied to the Democratic Party. All right. Oh, he's independent. You know, he talks like FDR, you know, well, when it comes time to vote, he votes Democrat. Right. And he the, the Democrats allow him to be independent up there in Vermont, you know, and don't run anyone against him as long as he plays ball with them and mm -hmm. doesn't try to expand his social democratic ideas outside of Vermont, you know. And when it comes down to it, uh, you know, Bernie says, oh, vote for Joe, you know, and uh, oh, no ceasefire, right, et cetera. So, I mean, that that's just part of the manipulation uh, that goes on. And manipulation on the right, you know, oh, they're going to run Nikki Haley, you know. Nikki Haley, what? She was throwing a lot of money at her by big, big New York bankers, you know, to funnel it to see if they could challenge uh they know they couldn't beat Trump, but they hoped that she might get enough delegates so when they got to the Republican convention, uh, they could manipulate that at that point. But uh, she didn't get enough, you know. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're still stuck with, with this uh, shell game that we're the victims of here. But look at the system in terms of a single party, a very clever single party system uh, where you have two wings who are playing this game on us that won't let anybody else in the game, you know, and they're both working overtime and their institutions you know, play ball and help them, whether it's the media institution or the Supreme Court, court system institution or whatever, plays ball with them. Uh, and that's the way it was all set up.